Hi, dot plots are a valuable tool that will help you better understand your patient's complete blood count. In just a few seconds, they provide you with extra information about the health status of your patient and the quality of your sample, thus providing considerably more information than the numerical data. In general, the examination of the dot plots should take just a few seconds, and it should be completed before you look at the numerical data provided by your analyzer. Each dot on the plots represents something that has passed the laser. That could be an individual cell, like a neutrophil or a platelet, or it could be a platelet aggregate. These dots come together to form clusters, sometimes known as clouds, and each cluster represents a population of cells. In this white blood cell dot plot, we can see clusters for lymphocytes, monocytes, neutrophils, eosinophils, and basophils. We can look briefly at the density of the clusters as an indication of the numbers in each population of the cells. But for me, the most valuable question to ask is, are the clusters well separated? If I can see distinct clusters, the analyzer is able to appreciate distinct populations of cells. Each cluster has its own color, and I can look at the legend to understand which is which. If the clusters significantly overlap, the analyzer cannot see distinction between the populations of cells. Slight overlap is not problematic, but in this dot plot, there is a continuum between the dark blue representing the lymphocytes and the red representing the monocytes. Put simply, if a single cluster has multiple colors, the automated analyzer has encountered difficulty separating the populations because it does not recognize them as one of the five normal leukocytes. There is potential for misclassification. Thus, the percentages in the white blood cell differential and the absolute concentrations could be wrong. The affected populations will be shown with an asterisk. Here, the total white blood cell count will not be affected. This exact same phenomenon is likely to occur with the analyzer at the reference laboratory. It uses almost identical technology after all, so the presence of these extensively overlapping clusters is my prompt to request a manual differential by microscopic examination of the blood. It's known that manual differential counts are inherently imprecise, but when the clusters are overlapping extensively, it is what I must resort to do. In this case, the patient was diagnosed with acute lymphoid leukemia. He had a large number of large and abnormal lymphocytes in circulation, some resembling monocytes, thus explaining the abnormal dot plot. On the white blood cell dot plot, the y-axis is fluorescence. After addition of some of the prosite stains, cells with greater concentration of RNA in their cytoplasm or more DNA in the nuclei will fluoresce more when hit by the laser. Generally, immature cells have more RNA in their cytoplasm and will fluoresce more. So within a population of cells, more mature cells are lower on the y-axis and less mature cells are higher on the y-axis. In this next animation, we see the pattern of changes typical of an inflammatory leukogram. See how the lilac cluster for the neutrophils spreads along the y-axis. If your treatment is successful, we would expect that cluster to retract back to a more normal state over successive CVCs. Review of the dot plots can also help me better understand platelet clumping. Platelet clumping is a common problem in veterinary practice, especially with feline samples and with canine samples obtained from a peripheral vein. Platelet aggregates are troublesome for all hematology analyzers, and many have a warning flag if large clumps are present, but a simple flag has limited sensitivity, meaning it doesn't catch all cases, and it does not tell you whether there has been an impact on the white blood cell differential or not. One of the great benefits of looking at the dot plots is to better understand the effect of platelet aggregates on other reported concentrations. It helps me answer the question, do I need to get a fresh sample from this patient or not? On the precise white blood cell dot plot, platelet aggregates may be seen as a curvilinear path extending from the orange area in the bottom left-hand corner. The exact path will vary from sample to sample. In this particular patient, we can see the path extending through the areas that will be classified as basophils and eosinophils. 
Remember, whenever we see overlapping clusters, we know that there is likely to be misclassification of cells. We can understand that the reported concentration of eosinophils and basophils will be artificially high in this case. In most cases, there will be an asterisk to indicate that the results must be verified. In this next example, we again see an extension of the orange, but the path is different. This time, it is the reported neutrophil concentration that is affected. However, with neutrophils, this influence is usually less significant than with basophils and eosinophils. Remember, the concentration of neutrophils in the blood is usually relatively high by comparison to eosinophils and basophils. In this sample, the misclassified platelet aggregates will probably only contribute a small proportion to the total reported neutrophil concentration. In this third example, I can see that despite extensive platelet aggregation, there has been no impact on the white blood cell differential. The clusters don't overlap, and we can have very high confidence in our automated differential. Platelet aggregates are a problem for all hematology analyzers. The great thing about dot plots is that they help you understand the influences on the numerical results. Looking at the red cell dot plots, we can get information on the mature red blood cells, reticulocytes, and platelets. For the red blood cell dot plot, we have size on the y-axis. If we compare this patient's dot plot with a normal example, you can see the cloud of red blood cells is lower. In this particular patient, the microcytosis was caused by iron deficiency. Remember, the mature red blood cells that we're looking at now were made some weeks ago. This is rather historical information. If we were able to correct the iron deficiency, we would expect it to take more than six to eight weeks before this cluster resumed a more normal height on the y-axis. However, the cluster of reticulocytes shows the more recent output from the bone marrow. We expect this cluster to move much more promptly with any resolution. Take a look at these two patients. They both have reticulocytosis. The patient on the right has relatively small reticulocytes. Again, this was found to be due to iron deficiency. Yet this time, it was too early to see a change in the size of the mature red blood cells. In just a few seconds, dot plots provide you with valuable information about both your patient and your sample. It is well worth looking at them for each and every complete blood count before you look at the numerical data. Remember, they give you additional information, helping you to better manage your cases. Thanks for listening.